Hello and welcome to another broadcast of Deep Cough in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of mercy. Because one thing I'm realizing about the power of mercy is God tells us to be merciful. The Word of God lets us know that we are called as God has given us the mercy because we realize that mercy, I think in the, in the book of James, it talks about how mercy triumphs over judgment. And so God is making the shift today to begin to alert us to say, look, that day that you once were in is now officially over. Behold, I do a new thing. Now you're in a new day of my mercy, which means it's time to be merciful. See, many of us know how to move into mercy, but we don't know how to sustain mercy, which means a lot of us hear the message of mercy, we grab a hold of it, we grab a hold of agape, we grab a hold of grace, we grab a hold of these of these wonderful personalities and attributes and, and powerful weapons and tools of God, as I call them. But the problem is we hear them and we're up on a high for a, for a season and we're able to distribute mercy, distribute mercy. And then before long, what happens is we come back down to the reality of the old pattern that we're used to living in. And before long, we say, well, you know what? I can't really give mercy anymore because you've you've already, you know, you street, three strikes and you're out. You've already done this. You've already done that. So now you're out. But we're in a season to realize God is not calling us to get the hype and the goosebump anymore of understanding who he is, who his personality is, and what he has, and what he always has been, and what he always will be. God doesn't have mercy, he is mercy. God doesn't have love, he is love. And knowing that process, every single morning, his mercies are new every morning, which means God doesn't wake up one day and say, that was an old pattern, that was yesterday, I'm tired of it, they've done me dirty, they've hurt me, my people have done me wrong, you've cussed your last time, no more mercy today. He doesn't look at you and say, you know what, you've committed adultery your last time. I've had enough. I don't care how much you call upon me. No more mercy for you today. No more daily bread will I give you today. See, God does not do that because God does not have mercy. God is mercy. And therefore, knowing that His mercies are new every morning, God sets Himself, check this out, God sets Himself on autopilot that the authentic, true self of who He is is living in the overflow to constantly as an autopilot does, constantly flow out of the abundance of his heart to live the lifestyle of who he is, of mercy, to where every morning he just overflows with himself because he set himself on autopilot to automatically, constantly generate and to flow out. He never damns himself up to say, I've had enough. And guess what we do as people? We damn ourselves up once we've hurt, once we've hit, and the hype moment is gone, once the moment of elevation, of the feeling has left us of the anointing, then all of a sudden we put ourselves back on the way we used to be on the autopilot of negativity to say enough's enough. That day is over. That moment, that feeling I had of mercy is over. Why? Because you just possessed it. You didn't become it. But God is calling us and requiring us now to become merciful, to become gracious, to become loving, to become love, to become these things that He is. And knowing that we are called to be as Him, He says, as I am so are you. He didn't say of what I have, you shall have that. He says, he's, and he, I love this statement because in this prayer to his Father, he says as I am, so are you. Now as I am, so are you. So he says to become him in the earth, correct? So he says, become me in the earth. But then later on you hear another scripture that says what? It says, the things I do, you shall do, and greater. Which means, look, first and foremost, you have to learn to become me. You become me to where you don't possess me. You become me. And as you become me on planet Earth, because as I am, so are you. I'm learning to be the I amness of God on Earth. I am learning, and I'm moving, and I'm shifting to be the I amness of God on Earth. I'm not tapping into, every once in a while when I feel down, tapping into the I amness of God. I have have become the I amness of God on earth because he says as I am so are you he didn't say as I am you shall begin to grab a hold of it tap into it every once in a while when you need it get a hold of it he says as I am so are you so I'm tapping into the I amness of who God is within my own life to become the I am and when I begin to move into the, the quality and the character of becoming God to somebody it helps fulfill the scripture that says show 
show us the Father and that will suffice us. Becoming the Father is the only thing that satisfies the world, that satisfies creation. When you when you begin to tap into the mercy of God, for example, and you begin to be merciful to people and at a seasonal thing, on a seasonal time clock, then you begin to cease to be God to somebody. Because what happens is, you can't come and go from being who you're called to be, which is being the Christ to somebody. You can't come and go as you please. You must sustain yourself, maintain yourself by becoming. And once you become something, you no longer possess it. You become that thing. God is requiring us today to become mercy. Why? Because there's so much judgment right now. There's so much judgment, even from those in the body of Christ. There's judgment against these people. There's judgment against that group. There's judgment against this. I remember going through a season, which many of you were Remember, and some of you, unfortunately, are still there. But many of us went through a season where we had no mercy. I remember growing up years and years ago and um, in, in a big, large organization in Florida who was very prophetic, and we would sing songs like, We Have No Mercy. And it was, We Have No Mercy on the Spirits of Darkness. And I understood the concept back then. We have no mercy on the things of the enemy. But what we need to do is not focus on the negative and not focus on, on being hateful, even if it's towards the devil, what we need to focus on is being like Jesus and singing the songs of what I need to, to become. And therefore, when I when I do that, then I'm fulfilling the scripture that says, think upon these things. It doesn't tell me to think upon things about how to war with the enemy. It doesn't tell me how to think about this, how to continuously be in a warfare mode to fight the devil. It doesn't t- tell me that. It says, think upon things that are pure, holy, good report. These are the things you think think about. That's why the Bible even says what? Whose report are you going to believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Now knowing that, I realize that mercy, if mercy triumphs over judgment, then the goal with the body of Christ is to become that judgment. Um, excuse me, become that mercy. To where that way, when judgment comes our way, it will fall like water off a duck's back because the mercy of the Lord has gone before you because it's oozing out of who you are. Your essence becomes the mercy. Your essence becomes the presence of love. And when you begin to become the Father, become exactly who He is and what He is, then you begin to see that it begins to suffice the people. It begins to satisfy the people. It begins to cause them to drink and their well will never run dry again because they're drinking from the unlimited well within you of who you are, who you have become and guess what? It satisfies them and causes them to never thirst again. And when you begin to do that, you begin to see judgment fall on the left and judgment fall on the right and guess what? It won't harm you. It won't touch you. And even the judgment that is sent out against the people that the, that some of the people in the church is angry, is, is angry towards and they're pushing it towards these people, you begin to realize, wait a minute, my, I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I'm not wrestling against these people. I'm not wrestling against gay people. I'm not wrestling against uh, um, um, anybody. Uh, alcoholics, addictions. I'm not wrestling against straight people. I'm not wrestling against white people. I'm not wrestling against, against black people. I'm not wrestling against overweight people. I'm not wrestling against bald people. I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood, period. I'm wrestling with the aspect of the judgment. Now hear me out. What what I've been wrestling with is against the judgment that people have projected towards these people. I'm not not wrestling with giving them mercy because I become mercy. And when you become mercy, that will just begin to ooze out of you. You will begin to ooze the mercy of God to the people that, that other people have projected judgment towards. And guess what will happen? Your mercy that God has entrusted in you because you become the essence of who God is and the God in you, the Christ in you, will begin to arise with the hope of glory tucked in Him that will begin to be projected towards the person you're speaking to. And that person begins to shift into receiving the judgment of the religious system and receiving the mercy of God upon their lives. And that, my friend, will begin to change humanity. If you think about it, I remember the other day reading something on Facebook and we get thousands of you listeners right now who are on our Facebook page and I remember a person who was on our Facebook the other day who actually had uh, put on their Facebook that a good dear friend of mine, matter of fact, she said that from an apostle, because she works with people that are addicts, she works with people that have addictions and this quote unquote so called apostle told her, uh, she said uh, uh, she talked about how she gives grace to people, she gives mercy to people and do you know what this apostle told her? The apostle 
apostle told her, whatever you do, don't tell people, don't tell these addicts about the grace of God. Because when you do, what will happen is, they will continue in their sin. They will continue doing what they're doing by their addictions because they will take advantage of the grace of God. And yet she came unraveled and said, that is so totally not true. Almost the point of, get thee behind me, Satan. That's how I feel today. Because it's a place where we need to realize the grace and the mercy of God is to be given. Because the only thing that saved you and saved me was God's mercy and God's grace. His mercy endures forever. His grace is sufficient for us. Which means anybody you come to that you do not understand, whether you perceive them to be right or perceive them to be wrong, give them mercy. Give them grace. Give them love. Give them the things that you have learned to become. And you learn to become mercy. You learn to become love. Therefore, guess what? If, if, to the mercy, they'll begin to pour forth the merciful mentality. To those who are love, they'll begin to pour forth a loving anointing, a loving mentality. And guess what? You will never have to wrestle with, well, does this person deserve it? Does this person not deserve it? Well, how far is too far? Have you gone over your 70 times 7 point, uh, you know, point that God talked about? Well, you, know, uh, you know, well, this is too far. This is too out there for me. No, you, you, you don't move in the measurements of man. You don't move in those dimensions. Those dimensions are outside of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God speaks of unlimitedness, 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 no borders, no boundaries, no limits of God's grace, God's mercy, God's peace, God's compassion. You are called to move in these things, become these things, to where people begin to understand the concept that I'm sorry, you can rile me up, you can get me angry to start a march for Jesus in the streets to come against these people but it's not going to work for me. It's once again, it's going to be like water off a duck's back for me because I cannot come against the thing that I have become. And the thing that I've become is mercy. The thing that I've become is love. Because when you grow up into maturity, you grow up into Christ. And in Christ, there's either male nor female. In Christ, there is neither bond nor free. In Christ, there is neither this nor that. And knowing that, and by the way, for those of you who maybe feel sometimes this message might be roughly your feathers because maybe you might feel a little bit traditional, a little bit religious. If you continue to read that scripture of what is in Christ, you will read that it talks about two groups of people who are actually very barbaric and who are who are who are considered to be very mean and loyal, rough people back then. And yet the Bible says they're in Christ. So my question to you is this: Who do we think we are to declare and decree who is in Christ or not? Who do we think we are to decree and declare or to judge, you know, this person or that person when God's mercy triumphs over judgment, the book of James talks about. If mercy triumphs over judgment, then it's time for you to use the greatest weapon of warfare you have ever been handed in your life. The greatest weapon you hold in your hand right now is that of mercy. And I'm telling you that today with, with the sound of my voice, listen to me. Each and every one of you, we have thousands upon thousands of listeners that that, 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 that uh, respond to this deep cough, deep um, broadcast, and they respond by saying thank you because I did not know how to be merciful. I did not know how to be loving. And all you speak about is the good news, the good news, the good news. I said, you're right. What else is there to talk about besides the good news? The good news says, behold, I've, I'm doing a new thing. What is that new thing, God? The new thing that God has given us is what? Weapons. The strongest weapons known to man, which is the weapons of mercy, the weapons of love, the weapons of grace. These are weapons that causes people to, to see the Father in us and be satisfied. To understand that there's grace for me because your God's grace, it is sufficient for each and every situation a person in life is in. And when you think they've gone too far, that's when your judgment begins to kick in. You need to cast down that judgment mentality and say, I'm becoming mercy. I am mercy. That's all that flows through me is mercy, not judgment. The only thing that flows through me is the love that I've become. I'm like the woman with the alabaster box. I'm not going to un unloosen it. If I can unloosen it, I can put the cap back on. I'm breaking it open today. I'm breaking it open today of, of God's love, God's mercy, God's grace in my life to where it can never be repaired again. I, can, I don't have a lid where I control the power to say how far is too far. I broke that lid. I broke the jar in Jesus' name to become love, to become mercy, and to become grace, to become compassion. Because once again, we are New Testament believers. We're not Old Testament believers. We are New Testament believers on the finished 
finished work of the side of the cross of Jesus Christ. And knowing that, my goal is to become Christ to somebody. My goal is to become the Christ to someone. Because that, my dear friend, the fatherhood mentality in me will will suffice them and satisfy them. What the world needs today is God's grace. What What the world needs today is to show the compassion the love and the grace that God did, and even the respect, even with the woman with the issue of blood, even the woman who was caught in the midst of adultery, Jesus never disrespected them. He never disrespected them, but He honored them as human beings, and He showed His grace, mercy, and compassion. Did He tell the woman that was caught in adultery, go and sin no more? Absolutely. But before He did, He let her know, I don't judge you. I don't condemn you. I don't, I don't accuse you. And He showed her great respect and great honor. And then after that, then he said, and by the way, I want to give you a new life here. In other words, I can take your life higher, which is, which is this. If you don't do this anymore, go and sin no more. If you don't do this anymore, your life would be so much happier and so much grander. The, the power of who I am would flow through you if you just did not continue to do this anymore. If you do continue to do this, here's what's going to happen. You're going to live a lifestyle of the low call. But in me, there's a high call in Christ Jesus. And if you don't do this anymore, you will move into the high call of who I am, not move into a low call. And that's the whole plan of God, is give people grace and mercy, respect and honor and love and compassion and mercy. So many people have told me in the past, well, hold on a minute. As a prophet of God, you know, shouldn't you be decreeing the judgment of God, you know, uh, sentencing these things out to the people of the earth who are not straight up? Shouldn't you begin to come against this group of people? Shouldn't you begin to come against that group of people? I said, not at all. Not one place. You know why? Because before before I'm a prophet, I'm a son of the living God. Before I am any office with any gift, I am first and foremost a child of the Most High God. And as a child, I should respond and react and move and have the character and the personality of that of the Savior in which died for me. And because of that, I have to become Him first and the prophet must come through through the blood of Jesus and come through the will of God and come through the cross to be the image of Christ when everything I prophesy and everything I speak it will have to flow through the character of the things listen to me now through the character of the things that Jesus himself would speak the old saying what would Jesus do it's more like this as a prophet prophets out of God right now that are hearing me out there who are prophesying you better listen to me right now and that is this you've got to learn to prophesy through the words that Jesus spoke which means, what would Jesus say? What, whatever Jesus would say to someone that's in the act of adultery, that's how you prophesy the will of God towards a person's life. However he wants to formulate those words in that, in that creative ability that he, he so wonderfully does, through your mouth, do it. But it's got to flow in the flavor and the character and the flow of how he flowed while he was here on planet Earth. Because that's the will of God for us, is to become the Christ to someone else. So today, let your mercy triumph over the judgment of the earth. Let your mercy, let your greatest weapon that you you possess in your hand and in your spirit and the thing you become, let that begin to go before you when you begin to see those that are judging people and those who have received judgment and those who do this and those who do that and take out the measurements of how far is too far mentality. Take out the measurements of well they did me dirty, they did me wrong, they, they, need to, they deserve what was coming to them. Take out all those measurements, what I call measurements, and, re- and eliminate those and move into the unlimited realm of God's mercy is new every morning. God's grace is sufficient. His mercy triumphs over judgment. And therefore, guess what? Then you learn and and you've known how to become the Christ in the earth today. That's what's going to change the world and turn it upside down for the King of Glory. Amen. By the way, thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast today. And do me a favor, please. Go to our website, identitynetwork.net, and order my book, my brand new book. I'm telling you, it will change, radically change your life. It will transform you. It will strip away all the traditions of man. Trust me. I knock over what I call sacred cows. Whatever sacred to you, as far as traditions that make the Word of God of none effect, if you can't find a breakthrough, I always tell people this, if you're looking for a breakthrough and you're not getting a breakthrough, that means the traditions of the enemy or the traditions you have built within yourself are stopping you because they're making the Word, whether it's a prophetic Word or the Word of God, the written Word of God, it's making it of none effect. So you're moving into a place of voidness. And knowing that you're moving into a place or you are in a place of voidness right now, 
cow says to me that there are traditions and there are certain doctrines within that sacred cow that must be destroyed. That's why you can't have a breakthrough. Are you with me? The reason why most people do not get the breakthrough they're looking for and they find themselves going from prayer line to prayer line or going round and around is only because, simply because, you have traditions in you that are causing that, that progression to take you further. It's making it void and it's canceling out every time. You know, have you ever had something that just keeps on canceling itself out? That's what it's doing. It's canceling out your progression. It's canceling out the dawning of a new day. It's canceling out for you everything in your life that you're trying to progress and move into and to the furtherness to further your life into the being what God wants you to be. So you need to get rid of your sacred cows today. I promise you this book, which is called Abandon to Divine Destiny, will change your life forever. Guaranteed. It's the thickest book I've ever written. It's like, I think, 268 pages. Please go to my website, identitynetwork.net. Get a hold of my book or my ebook. If you want me to autograph this book and you heard this from the broadcast, when you call in or you Go to the website to order the book. Just shoot an email to our customer service and just say, just order the book. Want, want Brother Jeremy to autograph it and I'll be glad to autograph it for you. No problem at all. Also, I'm going to challenge all of our listeners. We have thousands of you out there that are listening to us through all over different aspects and different avenues from the website to satellite to different ways. And I want to share this with you as well. Please, I want you today, I want to challenge everybody right now that's listening to the sound of my voice. Please go to our website and partner with me today. Partner with me today. Our partnership program we just started four months ago and it's Partner with Jeremy Lopez. And if you partner with me, it is just $10 a month. And you can give more if you want to. There's a 10, 20, or 50. That's up to you. But if for just $10 a month, if you partner with me personally, because the Bible says to believe God's prophet, so shall you prosper. But that's not me. That's the prophet of God moving through me. That is His name is Jesus Christ. And I want you to partner with me today for $10 a month and I guarantee you, we have hundreds of partners who are satisfied because every each and every month, I bring forth a brand new revelatory teaching just for our partners for that month. Way before we release it to the public, it goes to them personally. And I'm here to tell you right now, we, we deliver them the first of every month. And so every month, you're going to be guaranteed to get, get, to get what I call, so many of our partners, while well, I laugh at them, but so many of our partners call them college courses. They say every month, I feel like I'm getting college again because I'm getting so much download from this one teaching. I, know, I, I tell people all the time, I want to make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. I want to make sure you're getting revelatory things that will challenge you. Not some hype, not some CD of teaching of me maybe just getting emotional on it. No. You need to be taught because you know what? You're a child of the Most High God. You're a, you're a mature son and daughter of the Kingdom of God and you deserve the very best that we can give you. And that's what my, that's what my challenges every month is to give to my partners the very best teaching that can possibly I can give them for that month. It'll be a fresh revelatory word just for you during that month. And so I want you to please go to our website, identitynetwork.net. On the right hand side of the column, you will see a box that says partner with Jeremy Lopez. Just click on the box. It takes you not even one minute and just go through the system and there you go. And that way, I, what I'll do is I'll send you a teaching today, today for this month instead of starting you off next month and then the next month you'll also get a teaching as well for that month that I will do for you that week. So I want you to begin to partner with me please. I want to challenge each and every one of you to do that for me today. Get my book and partner with us today. If you want to go to the website on identitynetwork.net sounds good. Shoot us an email so I can send you an autographed book and I can also send you an extra teaching for that month as you sign up as, to be a partner. And also if you want to do that you can call my office right now if you want to do both as well. Our office number here is 205-362-7133. That's 205-362-7133. So give us a call now. Order the book and I'll autograph it for you. And also partner with me this month and every month for just $10 so I can get a teaching, a fresh teaching in your hand every single month sent to your email, and you can download it, and you can upload it, and you can keep it forever. All right? God bless each and every one of you, and I look forward to hearing from you soon and talking to you on the next broadcast.